Hi everybody, Eugene here with Darkroom Software. In this quick video, we are going to be designing a template 100% in Darkroom. Even if you are a Photoshop professional, this may still be a good video for you as we're going to be covering tips, tricks, and features that are often overlooked or forgotten about. So let's go ahead and crank up the music and jump right in. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to want to do is download a handwritten font. This is going to be a Polaroid image, so we want to make sure the font looks as if it was handwritten with like a Sharpie back in the day when we used to write on our photos what they were because it wasn't included in metadata. So I'm going to open up my web browser and go to uh, Font Squirrel and I'm going to just type in hand and there is a specific font that I'm looking for. Um, let's uh, enter and it's this one right here. I'm going to click download. I think I actually have it downloaded already in my downloads. So I'm going to open that up and install the font. So that font will won't automatically show up in Darkroom. We want to first close Darkroom Booth and then open it back up and then it should be available. So let's do that. Close this. Okay. And we're going to uh, just kind of take a mental picture of this template, but we're going to start from scratch. I know it's sized for a 4x5. Now if you want to use a 4x6 um, so you can print it out so it matches better with the printer or if you have a 4x5 printer or if you just want to uh, share it that's where you don't have to actually have a size that matches your printer if you're just going to use it for sharing. So 4x5 is good in this situation. Um, the orientation, the file name. So next I think I had a, a background, it was a shape with rounded corners. In this case it's uh, rounded corners small and it was just a little bit off white. And this is actually going to serve as our background um, for the Polaroid. So this is where the tips and tricks start coming in. I'm gonna oops, right click fit and fill entire page okay and I can see that my rounded corners aren't showing that well so here's the next one I'm gonna set the background to black on the whole template and I'm gonna check this option that if it's saved as a PNG it will um, have transparency instead of black so if it's printed out it'll show as black if it is uploaded, then you wouldn't see that black and it would show the background of wherever it's uploaded to. Next, we're going to add a photo and I'm gonna use the size of position here because I want it to be, I think, 1100 by 1100. That ensures that it's a square image. And I'm gonna right click center horizontally and then drag it down until that uh, this edge and this edge appear to be similar and if I want to I can actually go in here and double check the position and it looks like the top is 60 pixels or uh, 10 pixels uh, further so I can just make that precise if I wanted to so one other thing that Polaroid images have is they actually have a kind of a bezel uh, uh, so we'll we're going to add a drop shadow um, on top of the photo and we're going to set the x and y for zero zero so it shows evenly on all four corners and we'll just set this for 15 and see how that looks okay so now if you look down the edge you should be able to see a little bit of a shadow there and we're gonna want to do the actually the same thing on the the white or the 
off-white background. Drop shadow. Uh, inside drop shadow. And we'll leave those and just see how it looks. And that's a little bit much, so we're going to double click on that. And just bring it back. Uh, shadow radius. Alright, uh, offsets both set to zero, and yeah, that looks just a little bit better. That it's not given too much of a 3D effect, and the light appears to be coming straight from the top rather than from a specific direction. Okay, so the next thing, it was kind of hard to tell on that example, but there was an antique effect. So we're going to click on effects, select antique transparency none and I'm going to click OK and it's now taken the full um, if we move it we can see it takes the full canvas and I don't necessarily want that to happen what we want to do is have it just over the image area so I'm going to click on the antique effect hold down control and click on the photo object and then right click make same position and size. So now they're stacked right on top of each other and the effect is just applying to right here. So one thing about the antique effect, because this is all a retro design, it can be a little bit overpowering and there's no way to add a percentage here to that effect. But we can add a percentage to a photo. So I'm going to duplicate this photo and put it on top. So at this point, it's cancel out the antique effect because it's on top of the photo. But if I set it to simple, and then 50%, what's going to happen is it's going to show 50% of this photo, and then beneath that, it's going to show the antique effect being applied to this photo. So essentially, we're getting half of that antique effect being applied using three different objects is kind of a, a multiple step process but that's a good way if you like an effect but it's just a little bit too strong that you can control it a little bit okay i think we're getting close so we have the solar eclipse and it is going to be october 14th 2023 and hopefully you're in the path of this uh, eclipse if not there's another one coming in April uh, that should be a total solar eclipse so that's something to look forward to uh, I'm lucky enough to be in the path of both of them right uh, right in the middle where they intersect okay uh, what font did we want? It was something with a D. Um, oh, there it is. So there's our little handwriting font. And so right there, that's kind of the basics in uh, of adding text. We have we don't really have a lot of control here. Uh, if we wanted to space it together, if we double click, we can go into the line spacing um, and we can multiply it by two and that would give us twice the space. But if we multiplied it by 0.5 or in this case, let's try 0.7, we might be able to squish that, that space together just a little bit better. And uh, there we go. I think that does it. Let's go ahead and save this and uh, test it out. So I'll include this template along with this template. It's just about to show up on the guide on the help center darkroomsupport.com. Everything here as well was made in darkroom. Now it would be a lot easier to build this in, in Photoshop if you if you know Photoshop if you're a Photoshop user I love Photoshop good for you um, but if not 
here are some options directly within darkroom but let's test this out it should give us a review and there's our image with a little bit of um, antique effect and I'm gonna go back and show you something you can do that we used to do inside a traditional darkroom to see how effect applies and to kind of get a little better idea how it's working so let's switch back to our template and I'm going to just take this photo back there. I said this is a effect, or this is a something that we do in a traditional darkroom. When we do test strips, we would test out the exposure on um, so we can get the proper exposure. We can see, evaluate. So I'm going to essentially do the same thing here, and you'll see the the original photo without any effect and then the antique version with the effect and there is a sweet spot right in between that I think we got with that 50% so here's an example with the effect on you can see right down the center this is just a little bit too dreary and this one's just a little bit too vibrant so right in between is where we landed with the uh, adding that additional photo on top. I just wanted to show you something that you can use to test an effect before and after. Okay. So I'll be sure to add both of those templates so you can see what went into making them. Everything was done within Darkroom. Okay, so the theme I was trying to pass on in this video is that there are a lot of tools that are often forgot about that will help you work more efficiently, faster, more precisely, and you can also use them together to get hopefully a better design, a better look in your templates. I hope this has been helpful. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Okay, so there's one more thing that I wanted to show you and it has to do with the screen template. There are a couple things to remember. The more objects that you have here, uh, the slower it can be. So try not to go over the top. As you can see, mine's responding just a little bit slower. I'm going to show you one more thing. Right here, I have a square live view. The output is going to be square, but a lens would typically have a round reflection back. So rather than using a square, I'm going to delete. I have an effect and a square live view. I'm going to go ahead and delete both of those. <clears throat> if a live view is not available, it will automatically use photo one. So um, let's see, I'm going to make a square photo, put it right in there, but then what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a predefined mask, set to circle, and that should fit in there pretty good, we'll just try to center it just a little bit better, and you can use your shift to go in half increments or your control key to go in times two increments. Okay, let's go ahead and start the booth and see how it responds. So there's a couple things that we're gonna see. It's a little bit slower to load because we have multiple elements. So that's one thing to keep in mind whenever you're building and designing in Darkroom. And because we added that circular photo one instead of a live view in place of live view, that's gonna take just a little bit longer to load the live view, but there it goes. So after that session, it should uh, repeat itself a little bit more quickly, but that initial load takes a little bit longer. Just thought that would be an extra fun little tip. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Thanks again for watching. Here are a couple of videos that YouTube thinks that you might enjoy. Be sure to like, subscribe, but more importantly, if there's something you want to learn a little bit more about, comment below this video and I'll do my best to add it as a future video. I'll see you in the next one.